I heard about places like this. People went underground after outbreak day, built settlements. What happened to them? Maybe they didn't follow the rules and they all got infected. In episode 5 of The Last of Us, after agreeing to escape the city together via the tunnels, Joel, Ellie, Henry and Sam discover an abandoned settlement in the tunnels under Kansas City. In The Last of Us Part 1, the group find the same settlement in the sewers outside Pittsburgh. But who lived there? And how did they meet their end to become the infected horde that we saw in both the show and the game? This is their story. The time that the Cordyceps brain infection outbreak happened in the game, Paul Arona Ish, named for Isherwood Williams in George R. Stewart's 1949 post-apocalyptic novel Earth Abides, was out at sea. According to a note Joel finds in the boat's wreckage, he stayed there until supplies were low and he was forced to return to land. The note ends by asking anyone who finds his skeleton not to step on his skull. He didn't die, however, and managed to construct a safe house within the sewer. He was confident that, with the maze-like nature of the location and his own speed and agility, he could defend the place. From there, he traded with the family in the nearby suburbs for supplies, Kyle, Susan and their kids. This in turn made him realise the value of company and friendship, and he decided to take a risk by telling them of his hideout and inviting them to join him. They decided to accept his offer because the suburbs were under regular attack from looters, and shooting at the house of another family called the Carsons convinced them of the need to move. The safe house soon grew with more families from the suburbs and became a community. They had rain catchers set up for water, makeshift beds, shower stalls, and a school for the children whom Ish let paint the entrance like a castle. Along with another man called Danny, Ish protected the community by salvaging armour and weapons from dead soldiers. But it wouldn't last. In Ish's last note, he laments that it only took one open door to let the infected inside. Ish, Susan and several children escaped. The rest weren't so lucky. In the game, Joel finds several corpses including a group of children covered by a blanket. Jesus. Before fighting his way out of the remaining infected, only to find Ish's scrawled warning on the barricade they had made whilst escaping. All of the details of how the community came to be and met its end are found in notes that the player picks up in the sewers and the suburbs. However, in the show, the location is not part of a sewer system by the sea, but instead in the service tunnels connecting several buildings. This changes the story in that Ish is unlikely to have survived at sea for any part of the outbreak, and instead probably fled there to hide from Fedra with a much smaller community. In addition, from what Henry tells Joel, we know that Fedra cleared the tunnel of infected three years prior. This drove them into the suburbs area where they burst from a hole in the ground towards the end of the episode. Whether this happened after Ish's community became infected in the same way as the game, or whether Fedra caused the infected to reach them is unclear. Either way, the presence of children among the infected makes it clear that Ish's community was among the horde we saw. It's also a lot less likely, though not impossible, that Ish himself was able to escape during these events. Let me know in the comments what you thought about how episode 5 of the show handled this piece of lore from the games, and your theories on what changed about Ish's backstory. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that's just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. Check out the links in the description to join my Patreon for as little as £1 per month, or donate to my GoFundMe, and get your name in the credits of my videos, like those rolling up now, who I want to thank for supporting me and my content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!